Hey, welcome back. Uh, my name is Jason and we're going to talk about the steam tables and the Mollier diagram. So you have steam tables whether you picked up the uh, paper copy or you're using the one that's in your resource folder and it's got uh, several different tables in it. Uh, table one is the saturated steam temperature and while that all that means is that your data starts with temperature. So if you know the temperature of something, you can go and see uh, all the relevant properties for that temperature. For example, let's say you wanted to know what the saturation pressure was for water at, uh, say, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, you go find 105 degrees Fahrenheit on your steam table, on table under table one, and the pressure right next to it is your pressure of saturation. So saturation pressure is the pressure that that fluid for a temperature rise, the, the sensible heat stops and the latent heat starts, which means it's going to start converting to a vapor. Um, when you're looking at the Mollier diagram, when you're looking at the Mollier diagram, that saturation point is this red saturation curve here. And in the back of your steam tables, it's also a red line on your Mollier diagram. So for 105 degrees Fahrenheit, you're looking at 1.1032 pounds per square inch absolute. That's the saturation pressure. So as an exercise, Let's go look at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, look at that. When you look at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, your saturation pressure is 14.7 pounds. That means water boils, starts to boil. It's at saturation point. It's not going to, any additional heat beyond that, once it gets to that 212 degrees Fahrenheit, starts to convert it into the steam water mixture. So it starts to boil. And that atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds. So for temperatures lower than 212 degrees Fahrenheit, we need a lower pressure in order to reach that boiling point. Now, let's say you don't know the temperature, but you know the pressure. Well, you go to table two. Table two gives you the pressures that correspond to all the stuff. So, if we go find 14.696 PSIA, 14.7 pounds absolute, that corresponds to 211.95 degrees Fahrenheit, so 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the other columns here, there's specific volume. Now, when we talked about volume, volume is cubic feet, right? But anytime you divide a property by its mass, you end up with the specific property, in this case, specific volume. So it's the cubic feet per pound mass. And you'll notice all these properties across the top here, uh, specific volume, enthalpy, and entropy are all the small letters, which means they're the specific properties. It's not just enthalpy, it's specific enthalpy, which is enthalpy per pound mass. It's not, the it's not just entropy, it's specific entropy, which is the BTUs per pound mass degrees ranking. So, let's do a quick look up. If I give you a pressure of, let's use something more realistic for our plant. Let's say 1,000 PSIA, okay? If I go look at a thousand PSIA and I tell you, hey, I've got steam that's at a thousand pounds per square inch absolute going into a turbine. What's the enthalpy of that steam going into the turbine? Well, it depends on where it's at on our Boulier diagram. So you need one other piece of information. Is it saturated steam, which, which means it's probably some steam water mixture? If it is, I've got to also give you the quality or moisture content of that steam. If I tell you it's dry saturated steam, that means that that's, that has gone completely through the phase change process and it's exactly 
and it's exactly on this curve here. So it's dry saturated steam and now any additional heat added is back to sensible heat and will raise the temperature of that steam. Okay? So dry saturated steam means it's right on that saturation line, which means it's 100% quality. 100% quality means it's 100% steam. There's no moisture left in it. There's no liquid left in it. All the liquid has been now completed its isothermic process, uh, the phase change, and is now steam. So that's good, because that tells you which column to use on here. Because if it's 100% quality, which means all steam, dry saturated steam, these are key words, you're going to want to remember these. Dry saturated steam, I'm now using the enthalpy, the specific enthalpy that's H sub G, which is specific enthalpy for a gas. So the enthalpy of that steam, that dry saturated steam, at 1000 PSIA, and I go across here to the H sub G, I find 1192.6 BTUs per pound mass. I wonder if I can do that, get that focused. Focused. Yeah. So I'm you looking at H sub G, and I'm following it down to the 1000 PSIA and that's 1192.6 BTUs per pound mass. Now if I told you that it was saturated liquid at a thousand pounds that means something different, right? That means I haven't gone through that phase change. It's right at the start of the saturation curve, right at the start of Right at the start of that isothermic process where it will convert to steam. So saturated liquid is a saturated fluid. So 1,000 pounds, if I told you saturated fluid at 1,000 pounds, you would use this first enthalpy. H sub F for a fluid at 1,000 PSIA. And that is 542.6 BTUs per pound mass. So that's a huge jump. I think Jim and I worked through one of these with you on our, one of our previous videos. So there's another way to find what the enthalpy of something is, or what the pressure of something is, or what the quality, what the moisture content of something is. And that's straight on the Mollier diagram. So if I gave you a problem where, hey, let's use that, that main steam again at 1,000 PSIA. But I also tell you, hey, it's got uh, some value of enthalpy. So here, these, see these lines going up this way? These are pressure lines. And you can see those pressure numbers here, right on the saturation curve. And it tells you this is 200 pounds. So anything on this line is 200 pounds. Anything on this line is 300 pounds. Anything on this line is 500 pounds, 900 pounds, 1,000 pounds. And you have to pay attention to those divisions. So your key for what those divisions are is all the way up here at the top, right here. So if you're wondering whether a line is, uh, whether it's 100 pounds between lines, like 700 to 800 pounds, or 50, pounds between lines, like the 500 to the 550, you've got to look up here and pay attention to that because this isn't consistent. You know, they're not all 20 pound divisions or 50 pound divisions or 100 pound divisions. It changes. Uh, I'll just walk through. It's 120 to 140. There's 20 pound, 20 pound, 20 pound, 20 pound. A few more 20 pounds. When we get to 300 pounds, now it starts jumping up by 50 pounds each division. 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, then 600. At 600, it jumps up to 100 per division. 
So now it's jumping up by 100 pounds, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400. At 1,400, now it's jumping up by 200, et cetera, et cetera. So those divisions get larger and you have to pay attention and your key is up at the top. So if you remember from one of your previous videos, there was a uh, diagram, a 2D diagram, like a temperature entropy diagram, and we showed you what the critical point was, and it was more of a bell curve critical point on the top, and you could see the sensible heat, the latent heat, and the sensible heat going across. So this is sort of the same thing, but it's turned, it's skewed, and bent like this because it's enthalpy versus entropy, which means our critical point is all the way down here. That's our critical point. Instead of up at the top of our curve, this is interesting to note because see all these lines coming this way on this? That's the moisture content lines. This is going through a phase change, which means anything that falls in here is a steam water mixture. It's saturated with some level of quality. Now don't get confused by these numbers here and quality. These are percent moisture lines, constant percent moisture. So these show you the percent moisture Quality is the opposite of that. So if I say 25% moisture, that means 75% quality. If I say 2% moisture, if I give you a problem that lands on 2% moisture line, that means 98% quality. So you have to subtract this number on your Mollier diagram from 100. So you have to subtract this number on your Mollier diagram from 100. So, real quick recap, anything inside this red curve, inside the saturation curve, is a steam water mixture, right? Which means it's not subcooled and it's not superheated. To be subcooled, we have to be way off, it's not even on this Mollier diagram, way off down to the left here. Uh, and this won't even show it. Now this does show superheat. Anything above this saturation line is superheated, which means sensible heat is rate can raise the temperature of anything above this red line. So if I gave you, we'll use our 1000 PSIA, and let's say I picked right here, and I told you it was at 1160 BTUs per pound mass, I follow that enthalpy line, over to my 1000 PSIA line right there. Now it lands on another black line. Well, that tells me I'm below the red curve so I know it's a saturated steam water mixture. And then I can follow that constant moisture line and that's five. So 5% 5 constant moisture which is 95% quality. So it's 95% steam at that point. At this point that I just gave you is 95, 95% steam. 95% quality is 95% steam. That's a nice way of thinking about it. And I'm really close to being dry saturated steam. So once again, if you can find it on here, down here is saturated. On the line is dry saturated above the line is superheated and you won't even find it on here if it's subcooled. So one of the reasons that we practiced our unit conversions, our pressure conversions, is because you're going to be given some problems with pounds per square inch gauge. Hey, I've got this slow pressure turbine with steam inlet pressure at 600 PSIG and it's dry saturated steam. What's the enthalpy? Well, if I were to find the 500, 600 point line right here and just take that across to the enthalpy, I'd be wrong because I have to add 14.7 PSI to that to get my PSIA. So 600 PSI G is 615 PSIA. 
So I'm going to go just a little past that. Now, and that was a bad example because it's going to be pretty much the same enthalpy on here. You'll see a small difference in your steam table. Don't lose track of that. So if I were to look that up in the steam table, the difference between 600 and 615, and I wanted the enthalpy of a dry saturated steam, so 600 dry saturated is 1203.9 BTUs per pound mass, which we know is wrong because we want 615, which is almost 620 here, and it'd be 1203.5. So we'd interpret, we'd figure out the difference and we're three-fourths of the way between five and nine, so it would be 1203.6 would be the correct answer. So one of the questions you're going to see talks about identifying where you are on your, in your saturation curve. Are you in subcooled region way down off here? Are you saturated conditions with some percent quality? or are you superheated, your dry is superheated, up here. And if I gave you a point right here, so I'm within, I'm underneath that red curve, and I said, okay, now I've got some amount of steam, of fluid, fluid means either liquid or gas, right, it can mean both, and I add one BTU of heat to that. What happens? Well, because it's in the saturation curve, you know, that it's going to keep continue with the phase change and that added heat is the isothermic process where it doesn't get hotter right that's not sensible it's latent heat so the enthalpy changes and so the enthalpy goes up right the moisture the moisture quality gets better as i go up across these moisture lines right as i heat it up it gets drier and drier and drier as it gets closer to that saturation curve and it's going to follow whatever pressure line right because it's going to be a steady pressure so if I take 500 uh, PSIA that's starting off at 16 percent moisture content right so 84 percent quality and I add one BTU of heat it's going to follow that up and that amount of heat is going to raise the enthalpy, right? This is enthalpy on the left. It's going to raise the enthalpy. It's not going to raise the temperature, which means more of this moisture, more, more, more of this fluid is going to vaporize. Now, if I gave you a point up here above the saturation curve and said, well, you add one BTU of heat, the temperature is going to go up. If I gave it to you in your steam table so that it's subcooled, well, then the temperature will go up, right? Because it's still got to get to the saturation line. So one of the problems you're working this week, uh, one of the processes you're studying is a throttling process. One example of that is we have a steam going to a turbine, and this steam going to a turbine goes through a governor valve, and this governor valve controls the amount of steam going to the turbine, control the speed. So let's say the steam header pressure that I'm supplying uh, is, oh we'll pick uh, a thousand, we'll, I like a thousand, we'll say a thousand PSIA. And let's say that our moisture content isn't real great, or it's not real super dry steam, it's not all the way up here to dry saturated steam yet. And we're sending it to, we're going to send this steam to another turbine through a valve. Well, a valve is a throttling process, and what that means is it's a constant enthalpy process. So I'm just going to follow that line on the enthalpy of 1160 BTUs per pound mass across. And let's say the inlet of the turbine, the steam chest, was 200. PSIA. Well right here is where it crosses 200 PSIA. And then I can look at the bottom and see what my change in entropy is from this point to this point. So throttling process, okay, 
A throttling process is a constant enthalpy process and goes straight across. Now, work done by a system. A turbine is, when a turbine does work, it's at a constant entropy process, isentropic. So when we find a spot, let's say the turbine we're going to work with starts up here with dry saturated steam, it's a low pressure turbine at 300 PSIA, and we say that the condenser is operating at, uh, we'll say, let's say it's a high pressure condenser, and we're going to go down to 20 PSIA. Well, a con a turbine doing work is an isentropic process, so I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to draw this down, draw my line, and I'm going to find where does this cross the 20 pound PSIA at, right here. Okay, so how much enthalpy did that, how much work did that turbine do? Well, it's the difference between the enthalpy here and the enthalpy here. So here, if I follow that across, I'm looking at 1205 BTUs per pound mass. And down here, I'm looking at 1010 BTUs per pound mass. So now, I've got 195 BTUs per pound mass of work done by that low pressure turbine. And I can graph it, I can chart it right here, I can plot it right here. So I hope that gives you some ideas of how to apply some of these things, how to use your steam tables, what the enthalpy is, uh, and specifically how to plot out the work of a turbine and a throttling process, which is an isenthalpic, constant enthalpy process, or the work of a turbine, which is isentropic, constant entropy process. Getting used to doing those on your Molier diagram is important. You're going to see it. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in the uh, questions for the professor. If you have anything you want a specific video on, I kind of just shotgun this here because I haven't heard from anybody for anything specific, so I just kind of blah. Uh, let me know if this helped. Have a good week. I just kind of Blah. Of, uh, let right. All right, we're going to go back to autofocus.